Hello Brain Shakers, welcome to the Brain Shakers Academy, Brave Alistair is here. In today's session we're going to be looking at the fetal circulation itself. Now we have already started looking at the fetal circulation in part and I have done a separate video on some of those temporal structures that are created during fetal life and facilitate the smooth transfer of oxygen from the placenta into the fetus and if you haven't seen that video you can find it on my YouTube channel which is Brain Shakers Academy so do look out for it and don't forget to subscribe. Now let's get right into it and see how then blood flows during uh, prenatal or fetal circulation. So I have a diagram here that is going to help us understand the fetal circulation. So to begin with we are going to say that we obviously know that there is a placenta. So there is a placenta here where all the oxygen and the relevant nutrients are coming from and that is why we have a connection between maternal circulation and the fetal circulation because the fetus derives all its nutrients and its oxygen from the placenta. So the placenta is a temporal structure that then is created to perform several functions and one of the functions it does a uh, play key role in is playing the role of the lungs. The lungs in normal or adult circulation plays key role in making sure that the oxygenation or respiration process is actually facilitated. Now that during fetal life, we have plenty of fluid in the lungs and the lungs are unable to function in that order. The placenta takes its key role. Now from the placenta we already know that you have the umbilical vein and then back to the placenta you have the umbilical arteries. So we have a flow of blood that is emanating from the lake of the maternal blood there and then we have blood flowing through the umbilical vein and the umbilical vein is carrying oxygenated blood. So all the oxygenated blood is coming through the umbilical vein and as the umbilical vein comes through there's a portion of the umbilical vein that gets through to the liver through the hepatic sinusoid and then there's another part of the umbilical vein that bypasses the liver. Now the bypassing of the liver is going to create a temporal structure or a shunt that we call the ductus venosus because it is a connection of one vein to another vein which is the umbilical vein to the inferior vena cover. Now all the blood that then gets or gets to pass through the liver through the uh, portal circulation will then return back to the inferior vena cover and join the rest of the blood that is then returned to the right atrium. So we have blood flowing all this way coming through the ductus venosus here and then joins the inferior vena cover. Now the inferior vena cover is carrying all the deoxygenated blood from the lower portion of the body and then bringing it back to the right atrium. So as blood flows through the inferior vena cover here we have deoxygenated blood and we have oxygenated blood and this is where it gets so interesting because the blood that is flowing through the inferior vena cover here is going to flow in two pathways. You have one that is deoxygenated and you have one that is oxygenated and when it gets through to the right atrium that is where the separation now is going to actually occur because within the right atrium you have important structures. You have a number of valves here that play key role uh, in the separation of oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood. But of importance to the fetal circulation is a valve that we call the eustachian valve. Okay. So the eustachian valve here plays key role in making sure that the highly oxygenated blood that is coming from the inferior vena cava or from the placenta will gain access through the temporal structure, the foramen ovale, and then get through to the left atrium. Because we know that for blood to reach the rest of the uh, parts of the body, it has to get through the left ventricle and then pumped through the iota. So there has to be a temporal structure that is then created created from the right atrium to the left atrium which is this area here that we are calling the foramen ovale. So the eustachian valve here plays key role 
just as you enter into the right atrium it will separate and get the blood that is highly oxygenated and permit its flow through the foramen ovale into the left atrium and you have also deoxygenated blood coming from the superior vena cava we called this the svc and this one obviously is the ivc which is inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava the rest of the deoxygenated blood that is then going to reach the right atrium is then going to be permitted to go into the right ventricle okay so the rest of the blood then gets into the right ventricle through the tricuspid valve now because the heart contracts as a syncytium altogether. When there is contraction of the uh, cardiac muscles here, there is going to be pushing of that blood that is in the right ventricle to get through the pulmonary artery. Now, as blood is going to get through the pulmonary artery, it passes through the pulmonic valves, then gets into the pulmonary artery. Now, again, here it becomes interesting, and this is why the temporal structures play a key role in facilitating that the fit here gets a high amounts of oxygen and also it is important to make mention that the fetal hemoglobin has a high affinity to oxygen by affinity what we refer to is just it has a higher capacity to attach and to release that uh, oxygen as compared to adult hemoglobin and so do look out also for a video where I look at the uh, hemoglobin um, component itself and also the different hemoglobinopathies including thalassemias as well so as you look at uh, the blood that is circulating into the pulmonary artery so we said that the lungs here are actually not a functional and the lungs in them contain a lot of fluid now that fluid that they contain in them has created a state of a high pulmonic resistance so it means that there is a lot of resistance causing the blood not to actually flow to the lungs. So it means that 90% of the blood that gets or shunted from the right ventricle into the pulmonary artery will then cross again at a shunt or a temporal structure here that is created, which is the ductus arteriosus. So only about 10% of that blood is then going to get to the lungs because the lungs also still need some oxygenation. It needs that oxygen to be able to function and then allow the pneumocytes also to produce an important um, element or proteinous element which we call the surfactant which is just the ratio between uh, lecithin and sphingomyelin to then help uh, the fetus once it then is uh, delivered to be able to keep the lungs inflated and aerated so that you don't have those alveoli uh, breaking. So about 10% is going to get through to the lungs still because of that higher resistance and the constriction of the pulmonary arteries that resistance will still be there allowing the shunt now to play key role and get most of the blood that is deoxygenated then to get back to circulation by joining oxygenated blood again in the iota so you have that blood then coming to join in the iota. Now, whereas we were still on the right atrium, we had the foramen ovale that allowed the passage of oxygenated blood from the right atrium into the left atrium. So the blood that then flows into the left atrium is allowed to come into the left ventricle down here through the bicuspid valve. So once the blood then flows into the left left uh, ventricle the left ventricle will then contract and allow that blood to pass through the aortic valve which is here get through the ascending iota to the arc of the iota and then to the descending iota as it gets through the ascending iota you have two vessels there that are emanating that need to supply the heart you have the left and the right uh, coronary arteries then it means that some of that oxygenated blood will pass through so that the heart is consistently supplied with oxygen because it needs to generate its own atp and be able to continue 
uh, functioning and be able to continue pumping that blood. So the blood then flows through the major vessel, which is the iota, and then gets to the arc of the iota. You have the three major vessels there. You have the brachiocephalic, you have the left common carotid, and then you have the left subclavian artery, then supplying the brain as well, which is a very important uh, organ in this uh, instance, and also makes sure that it facilitates and controls all the rest of the structure. Now, the brain gets an adequate amount of oxygenation, approximately about 20% of the blood that is going to be circulating through the iota will then be supplied to the brain so that it can then be able to allow the fetus to withstand all the stresses and um, uh, the changes in uh, fetal environment. So blood then continues to flow. And as this oxygenated blood flows through the arc of the iota, it is joined by some deoxygenated blood here that will then continue to flow through the iota. Now, the descending iota gives rise to a number of arteries that continue to supply all the different parts, such as the kidneys and all the other structures there. Then once all the blood then continues to flow, flow down into this and within the internal iliac arteries we have here the external so as the descending iota comes down there, it then separates or bifurcates and gives rise to the iliac arteries, one to the left and one iliac artery to the right. Now, as you have the iliac arteries, the iliac arteries also separate to give rise to the external iliac artery and the internal iliac arteries. So you're going to have something like that. This one is going to be external and this one is going to be the internal. It is from the internal that you will then have rise of another temporal structure which is the umbilical arteries. Now the umbilical arteries are going to allow the flow of blood after all the utilization within the fetus. It is going to allow now the flow of blood through the uh, uh, through the umbilical arteries to take all the waste materials, the uric acid and the carbon dioxide and all the deoxygenated blood back to the placenta for the process of respiration. And then the placenta again is going to reoxygenate blood and then continues the process all over again and sends the blood back through the umbilical vein. So that is basically what happens uh, with the fetal circulation. So there are temporal structures and it is the importance of the temporal structures that facilitate or the presence of these temporal structures facilitate the smooth flow of blood within uh, the fetus during a prenatal life or during a fetal life. But once the fetus has then uh, been born and you have a neonate now, all those temporal structures will have to close and they will have to disappear in some way. And so do look out also for a video and see what happens to these temporal structures once uh, a baby has a actually been born. Now, if you found this particular video interesting and helpful in understanding how the blood flows from the placenta to the fetus during a prenatal or fetal circulation and then back to maternal circulation, do not hesitate to give me a thumbs up. Please share the video as much as possible and do not hesitate to follow and subscribe on our YouTube channel, which is Brain Shakers Academy. And as always, from me, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.